Lacey, thank you for calling. Thank you for holding. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing, Lacey? I'm doing good. I'm, like, listening as you're talking here, and it's just like I don't know what to what to think. <clears throat> About what? About everything. Well, because, like, you're saying that, you know, Jesus isn't God. And I didn't, I mean, for most of my life, I believed that Jesus wasn't God. And then this past two years, I've been believing that Jesus is God. And why? Because of like, um, like the verse that says, "If you've seen the Father, or if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Me and my Father are one." You know. So at some point, you did not believe Jesus was God, right? Yeah, when I was growing up. But... And then at some point, you st- the last couple of years, you started to believe that. And what made right. you start to believe that Jesus is God? Uh, because I went to a different church, so. That really pretty much different doctrine, you know. And so, uh, so they, were, they were teaching yeah. that at your church? Yeah, they were teaching that Jesus is God. And what made you believe them? Uh, because I just felt like um, felt like the work that God was doing in my life at that time kind of proved that. And I felt like the scriptures kind of correlated with it. What work was God doing in your life at that time that made you believe when the preacher said Jesus is God? What was happening in your life that made you believe the preacher was telling the truth? Well, I was more serious about God than I had ever been before. I was uh, repenting of my sins, getting all sin out of my life. And um, I um, I got baptized and... Uh, I got, well, what they call it at the church is when you get the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, and it was like a gift that God gave me, and I've, I never experienced anything like that before. Amazing. And did all that change after a while? Did all what change? All that stuff you went through and the good feeling you had about it. Yeah, it did change after a while. Well, like, it, like, you know, I thought I was saved, but I really wasn't because I was still committing in and things like that. Right. right. And, and so what do you believe today? What do you believe now? you believe Jesus well, I, is God or not? I, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. And why not? Because just, just, just what you presented to me just now, your case that you've presented saying that these people that believe is, that Jesus is God, you know, they're, they're the ones that are, <clears throat> you know, kind of like, well, they're the ones that are saying, you know, you have to do this and you have to do this and you have to do this, but they're internally, they're not okay. Isn't, lives, that, isn't that amazing? Because if you yeah. believe in God, and so you believe Jesus, if you believe Jesus is God, why wouldn't you have perfect peace in your life? Because Jesus right. came to bring peace. Right. Right. Have you ever thought about that before you heard me say that? Mm. No, I haven't. And why not? Because, I mean, I don't know. I feel like some people some people do, like, I look at some people and I feel like they do have that per- perfect peace. And then other people, I, they don't. Most people so don't have like it. Kind of a, Most people do not have it. Even those who look like they have it, they really don't have it. Right. I don't know. I mean, why would why would Jesus say that if you look at me, you've seen the Father? Because me and my Father are one. Why would he say that if he's not the same thing? Have you ever seen a child who looked just like his or her father? Yes. And when you see that child, don't you see the father? <clears throat> but it's really, yeah, not the, it's really not the father, but it's the image of the father that you see in that child? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, there's other scriptures, too. You know what I mean? Like what? Um, there's the scripture that <clears throat> says that um, the Word came, like in the first chapter of John. It talks about the Word. Right. And, the like, the Word came on this earth. And he, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And so, and then it said, and, and the Word became flesh. So... God became flesh. I mean, it even says that Jesus' name when was Christ, the mighty counselor. I don't you want, know what I mean? I don't want to convince you that Jesus is or isn't 
God, right? Because right. if I convince right. you, it would just be another preacher convincing you. But I want right. to ask, Jesus, do you believe that Jesus came to the earth, was sent to the earth? Yes. And do you believe God was with him? Do, do you believe that God was in him and with him? Yes. And do you believe God is the truth? Yes. And do you believe that when Jesus spoke, he spoke the truth that was given to him from within? Yes. And so when Jesus yeah. came, so the word was made flesh. Okay. Do you become made flesh mean that it's not on paper? Is this not the heart of the man? Can you say that again? Made flesh mean that it wasn't on paper. The word of God was not on a piece of paper when it came like that, but it was inside the heart of the man, right? Jesus right. came and, and the, the word, word was made flesh. It was in right. him. It was made flesh instead of written on a paper. Oh, wow. Okay. What does <clears throat> it, okay, what? What does that mean? I don't, I'm not, I, it's like, it's hard to process all this stuff. So it's like, I have to go back and I have to think about it. You know what I mean? Right. So. And so you understand, <clears throat> though, that the word was written inside of him. God was the word and he was with him. And that's why right. Jesus said, it's not me, but the father that's doing the work. The father is with me. He and I are one. Right. Yeah. So. The, um. I, uh. I, I've been doing the silent prayer and I've been doing things like that. And like you said, <clears throat> whenever they did, had church, you know, a long time ago, they didn't preach the Bible and things like that. Right. You know, so, I mean, if they didn't preach the Bible, I mean, what did they get together for? You know? Fellowship. To edify Fellowship. one another, to correct, to support. But they right. just go there and teach you the Bible. You learn the Bible like you sit up in some college class or something. And then you go out and just quote the Bible, but your life is miserable. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I first I first called your show about, it was about two weeks ago when I first called your show. And um, <laughs> I would made a statement that I probably shouldn't have said, but I would made a statement and I said that, um, how do you say that black people can't read? And I said, well, my husband has a hard time reading. Well, I had told him, you know, because I'm very honest with him. Re I'm sorry, him, Lisa, repeat what statement you made. Oh, um, I had made a statement of how you said that um, black people can't read. Right. And I said that my husband is black and he has a hard time reading. <laughs> and I and I told my husband about it and I showed him, you know, the video. And he's he, for two weeks, he's been upset with me. And he he has he's the provider. And he has told me that if I continue to listen to your show or if I continue to call or anything, that he's going to take my phone away. He, he's, he's been like crazy. What is he upset about because you said black people can't read? Yeah, because it pertains to him. Oh, yeah. His his ego was hurt. Yeah, hurt, huh? Yeah, very hurt. His ego was very hurt. And so, I mean, he, he hasn't smoked or drank or anything like that. I mean, in months and years, you know, it's been, I mean, at least a year since he's drank and it's been months since he smoked. Well, when that happened, he was started drinking. He was started smoking. He was even coming in the house playing rap music in the house. He doesn't even listen to rap anymore. <laughs> and he started acting crazy, and saying he was going to um, throw my phone out and get rid of my phone. I was going to have. I was not going to have a phone no more, and all this stuff. Amazing. And so he got really mad. And prior to that, was he? Treating you well? Was he doing the right thing? Yeah, he was reading the Bible with me. He was praying with me. He was doing all this stuff with me. And then when I started trying to tell him about, you know, the things that you had and the silent prayer and talking to his mom, forgiving his mother and father, things like that, he he doesn't want anything to do with it. And I thought I was just trying to help him. And, um, oh, this is a husband that could not tell his mother he yes. was a Republican or something like that, right? Yes. Amazing. And so your question for me is what? Uh, how to deal with that? How do you, do I just, you know, do I just um, appease him and say, I'm not going to do these things anymore? 
but then I'll be lying to him? Or do I just say, I'm still going to do this. You can throw my phone out. You can do whatever you have to do. <laughs> Very interesting question. What I recommend, do what you want, of course. I would apologize to my husband. Right. And say, you know what? I'm and sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I was wrong. And then right, and say, I have. And just say, I won't, I won't listen to Jesse anymore. I apologize. And stop okay. listening. Stop listening to me. Okay. And But don't harbor any anger toward him at all because he right. is the head of you, your head. And uh, whether he's right or wrong, I don't know. But just don't be angry at, about it, at him about it. Okay. Apologize. Don't be angry. And, 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 and God will guide you the right way. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. That makes sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. So just apologize and just stop listening. Okay. Thank you, Jesse. You're welcome. Thanks, Lacey. Have a good day. All right. Amazing. 